All right, fans, uh, I am here with, uh, what, what was your name, sir? Joe. Joe. Uh, Joe is yet another LARPer. Crazy that at a big LARPer gathering. Uh, Joe, what I game do you play? I currently play a game called Sovereign Scrolls out of East Texas. Oh, tell me more about that. What what uh, genre, what kind of a game is that? Uh, medieval fantasy. Okay. Uh, instead of having times per day skills, all of our skills are based upon uh, skill pools like uh, mana and vigor. Okay. And then otherwise it's a touch combat system. So it, it's not like uh, Amp Guard where you're trying to like really really get the, uh, the blow in, but instead you just lightly tap them. Right, yeah, we've had a lot of discussions on the show before about uh, touch versus full, what we call full speed, but essentially, you know, not pulling your blows sort of combat. Um, what uh, what first got you going in LARP? Um, back when I was 19, a roommate told me about it for the first time, a game called Nero, and he was a, he played DFW, Nero DFW back when he was like 14, so mid-90s. Talked about it. I was like, man, that sounds really cool. So let's go check it out. Then uh, it happened to be happened to chance a Nero Houston chapter open as we moved into Houston. So that's what got me started. Wonderful. Uh, how long have you been playing Sovereign Scrolls? Uh, it's only been open for three, almost four years now. But I've been playing it since the inception. Excellent. Um, yeah, so Sovereign Scrolls is one of the ones that I don't know as much as I should about. It's, it's fair. That's fair. Um, is it a, a larger group, or is it uh, this particular chapter? Or it's a single. It's a single game. We only have one chapter. Oh, well, yeah. that would be why I don't know yeah, as it's, much it's about a small it. Game. It's a small game. Where is it located out of? Uh, we play out of Woodville, Texas. So it's East Texas. Okay. Well, we're going to have to remedy this because I'm sure that uh, the Adventures of LARPing fans don't know as much about it either, and really need to. So the owner of the game is Tom Rocap. And okay. So I'd recommend looking him up on Facebook. I will do that. And uh, our, game, our gaming group's obviously called Sovereign Scrolls. If you look it up on the uh, Facebook group on Facebook, we will start with that, and then uh, we're going to try and find some time down the way to see if we can get a show with you guys. If we have to come out and do what we can, and 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 uh, hopefully promote you guys as well as the other LARPs get promoted. I'm sure we'll enjoy it. All right. Thanks for chatting with me, some. Another episode of the show. I'm Chris Clover, joined by uh, Matt Griffith and Courtney Manor, and we're going to start the, the show off by playing a game because it's a show about games called LARP from a Hat. We in no way stole this game from any other national television show at all, ever. No. All right. So what we have here are three bowls: one with different game genres, one with different character types and one with different races. What we're going to do is we're each going to draw one of these things and we're going to try and use our brains and put together the, the, the structure of a game that would incorporate all of these things. All right, so pick, grab one, grab one, grab what's in there. Is that the, the word character? That's, that's, that's telling which bowl it is. Let's mm. grab another one. There that's we are. Good. All right. We're going to create a game in the genre of high school. Detective. Aliens. <laughs> that actually sounds really easy. Okay, I already <laughs> want to play this game. So, <laughs> all right, let's see. All right, so so are 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 aliens in high school, or 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 is the show the the game in the? Uh, I don't even know where to start with this. There is so many wonderful <laughs> like, ideas. Is it a high school that has aliens in it, or is it all alien high? Or Ooh, good it, question. Yeah, is it I don't even know what you were asking then. I don't, I don't know, know what I was. I'm not real sure what I was asking either. But you, part of me says that this sounds like all kinds of shows that that my daughter watches. Oh. Everything on certain channels that have two letters in the name, correct? Sure, sure. And all sorts of high school, teenager, but but this time with alien detectives. I kind of like the idea of the aliens being in school. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like to... a Men in Black kind of thing, high yeah. school. 
That sounds like fun. <laughs> cool. That, that could very well be. All right. And we're copywriting that, and then we'll sell it to the, the men in black. But, I, uh, okay. We'll, we'll copyright everything but calling it men in black. And then, <laughs> wouldn't this be cool? Wouldn't you like to throw some money? Okay, maybe not. Well, All right. Added twist. Humans don't necessarily know that some of their classmates are aliens. Oh, so you have to, you have you have to, to play a detective to figure out who's who. Oh, find your alien that's, a, that's a whole different direction to go with it. Would the that aliens get special powers? Possibly. Otherwise, what's the point of being an alien? What happens? Trying to hide. <laughs> what happens from a game designer point of view, where everybody is given characters and, and they're all aliens trying to figure out which one is the uh, That sounds aliens. like paranoia. Uh, <laughs> old school. Uh... RPG. Uh, yes, yes, it, it kind of does. Um, all right, so a aliens as or detectives in the high school, but you know this would be fun to play in an actual high school. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Until like with high schoolers? Maybe not with high schoolers. <laughs> I remember high school. It wasn't wait, that long ago wait, for me. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what if what if the players? Uh -huh. All right, come in. To the setting, which is a real high school, and they have to figure out which of the students are aliens. Now, here's the thing. It's just normal high school that we put <laughs> people into as a fundraiser no. for the school. We do not advise actually doing this. Ask first. Ask if you first. have permission, oh, it is on, and we need to know about it. <laughs> Ask first, otherwise we're now, going to be getting some new Would all the students know they were playing, or just the ones that were aliens? I think it's best, in a case like that, that none of the school, it would be on maybe the, the people at the front desk, know that this game is going on. Oh, that sounds like You trouble. simply have, you simply have people wandering the school, trying to interact with some of the teenagers. That's how I remember high school. <laughs> and, oh. and figure out which ones are aliens. Certain crowds would just have a field day in this. Because I remember, I went to high school during the whole Invader Zim craze. That crowd was, <laughs> you play that game with that crowd, you're, I fear for your safety. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that well, one. <laughs> back, back in the day, high school, for, for us, we played a, may or may not have ever played killer and uh that that was that was interesting there may or may not have been uh, a variety of little plastic bullets flinging around the halls left and right um for a couple of months before the administration caught on <laughs> to something that may or may not have ever happened oh. ever now not, you know not why. happened yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no. <laughs> now I know why they never allowed Nerf guns at my high school. Oh, whoa, you just whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> They weren't allowed in our high school either. <laughs> yeah. What's that got to do with it? Yes. Now, now I know why. Because I'm like, there's nothing harmful about Nerf guns. Oh, wait a second. Now I know you two people. <laughs> I well, know there would be no air. If... <laughs> to, to be honest, to be honest, um, there, there may or may not have been aliens. <laughs> so all we were doing is playing an early version where we were simply trying to kill them all instead of figuring out what is mm -hmm. what. Now it's a little more on the, the politically correct side. We have to do detective work and figure out if if they're aliens. You can't go killing people willy-nilly these days, you know? Even fictionally. I, well. That's most of the LARPs I've ever played. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the downside is when you go in and turn this into, say, a buffer LARP game in, in the oh. middle of a high school. That, that might be bad. But, oh, uh, oh or this, this could be, actually, in all seriousness, mm -hmm. that the whole figuring out who's the alien would make for an interesting parlor game. It would be. Like, yeah. at, a, like at a party. Like, everybody come on over, take a card, you've got a character, you may or may not be the alien, and... Uh, but you're definitely a teenager. But you're definitely a teenager. <laughs> and so you have to really, really up the, the ante on, on being 
a teenager. Yes. Uh, yes yeah. I think, yeah, I during think the game. Fun game. This, this would be <laughs> oh. during the game, random things happen. So, uh, so-and-so accidentally spills his drink. Well, now he's got to go, you know, hide in a corner for, for a sullenly for a minute or so. Or uh, the wrong boyfriend calls, or the ex-boyfriend calls in the oh. middle of the party. <laughs> Dial the drama up to 11. I like that, actually. That sounds like fun. Okay, Brandon, this, I, I, this is a this fun is game. For me. This, this, <laughs> this, this could be all right. So it's a parlor game. This, uh, this could work. I, I, I still like the idea of playing in an actual high school, but, um, you know, I, yeah, that, that might be, may in, incur problems. But as a parlor game, this could actually yeah. be a real game. Or, you know, high school parties. Those were prom. always... From. From. <laughs> or, or, uh, uh... Who has the, who has the, 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 the reptile legs? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but now they all have dresses and... Hmm. Who's hologram is? Malfunctioning kind of thing. Malfunctioning holograms, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. All right. Well, stay tuned. We've got a, a whole bunch more uh, Adventures in LARPing show here for you today. And um, we'll get right back to you after this. Time again for another terrible LARP. Can't talk. Fish. This has been another terrible LARP. Good day, Adventures of LARPing fans. I'm Chris Glover, hanging out here today with Sheena... Ah, give, give, me your, give me your whole last name now. Van de Vanter. Okay, so I had almost figured out the pronunciation <laughs> of her name, and she up and changed it on me just to confuse me. That's, that's the whole thing about marriage. You get married just to confuse me. Um, but I'm sure that right below us, we have it written uh, appropriately. So, uh, Sheena is part of a Chupacabracon, uh, a local Texas gaming convention, um, about to be in its third year run. Uh, tell me a little bit about the con. So, Chupacabracon was founded by a group of Austin gamers that just asked the question, why is there not a gaming convention in Austin? And uh, looking around the room, we discovered that we had... Um, at least the basics of the talent we needed to pull it off. So um, a bunch of us just got together and invited our friends. And turns out we had a lot of friends in the gaming industry. And Go figure. Yeah, so it just has, has grown organically to be um, a convention for gamers, by gamers, about gaming, and specifically uh, focused a lot on people in the industry. So a lot of industry uh, writers, creators, developers come to this convention and enjoy each other's company. They get to game and they get to GM and uh, you know talk about their products and sit on panels and encourage new developers to learn what they need to do to be a part of the industry. And I, I know that uh, I was briefly at the first one. I know that you've had some some big name folks in the gaming industry come through. Who, who are some of the, the bigger folks that you've had uh, at this convention? Well, um, our first year we were privileged to have Aaron Olson, who um, unfortunately has since passed. He was an amazing writer and gamer. Um, we have Jason Morningstar has come several years in a row. Um, Sean Patrick Fannin, who is a huge Savage Worlds guy, wrote Shine Tar. Uh, Ross Watson, who is involved in the Star Wars Edge of the Empire game. Um, I mean, the list was 30 people long of guests of that same caliber. And you mentioned that, that you know, we're asking the question, why hasn't there been a gaming convention? And, you know, I got to tell you, through the years, I have asked that same question, just not, I guess, with the surrounded by the, the same folks at the same time. With, with the, the gaming community, what it is, I mean, here we are just outside of a tavern where you go and drink and play games, a gaming store and food at the same place. I mean, how often do you see that in, in places? And, and Austin is, is big for that. Um, so this year, there's a little something different with Chupacabra Con, and uh, we're talking about LARP, because this is a show on LARP, go figure. Um, I understand that you've had some LARP involvement in the past couple of cons, um, and this time we have an entire room devoted to it. Um, what, um, uh, how has that progression been? What, so we had John Wick as a guest our first year, who is a um, Legend of the Five Rings guy, 
and he had a great time but we didn't have the larp going for that so the second year we went ahead and booked some space to have specific l five our events happening for a couple of time slots they were really successful and then we got interest from some other people like you who were like you know what we think we would like to do more of this and it just so happens that the space that we're having it at this year the wingate in round rock has a wonderful perfect space for life ring so we were able to go ahead and dedicate a whole room just to that for the entire weekend i think that um, I, I've been to a, some, some various cons around the country, um, including all the way up to Origins is one of the big ones. And, um, and even there, where I went in expecting huge amounts of a wide variety of game and, and really ready for LARP, the, the LARP there was like maybe three games at nine at night. And, and I was kind of surprised that when I started with, with doing LARP things back in the day, um, I had to explain to people what it was. <laughs> and I find at this point, I no longer have to explain. It's just, it's LARP, and people get it and are ready. Okay, what genre, and let's go. And, and even that, I think, surprises me that, you know, you get multiple genres. You get to choose. Um, so, I, I, I don't know. From what I've seen at different conventions, I think that this is uh, um, a, a branch for LARP that I have not seen in the past. Yeah, well, we're very excited because I think it's something that that its time has come. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of other things like um, at Gen Con they have, what's it called? The, it's a big quest thing that you do that's kind of like I know what you're talking and about. you get tokens and you can get potion tokens. And that is really, it always sells out like immediately. And it's $50 a person and it's crazy. Um, people doing puzzle rooms. There's all this new excitement about doing active role playing. And, um, you know, not now the tabletop has kind of had its uprising. I think it's time for LARP to do the same thing. Right. And, and I, I, I think with the, the, the influx of LARP into the, the gaming community, it's no, I think that there have been sort of tiers of gamers. So, you know, some of the gamers look down upon other of the gamers. Ah, oh, you're playing the card games versus this. And for a long while, it's like, oh, LARPers were at the bottom of the pile. But I think they're, they're, they're moving up the ladder a little bit. Um, well, show me a gamer who hasn't been to TR, uh, Texas Renaissance Festival, or something like that. Or doesn't like cosplay at least a little bit, and I'll be real surprised. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking that as far as game, we're all kind of geeks and such, we have to at least pretend to be straight people for our normal jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're already doing LARP daily. That is true. I never thought about it like that. All right. All right. Well, um, so this year's is going to be, you mentioned Round Rock, right? That is correct. Um, we were founded in Austin, but we found this great little hotel called the Wingate in Round Rock. And it's got its hotel main structure, which has a great little area for breakfast. It's got a full bar on site. And then their conference center is actually a separate building, but it's like 20 paces from the hotel. So it's separate. We can be loudy. We, loudy. We can be rowdy and loud. Right, right. I'm with we you. Need to, um, we can lock up the... Uh, vendors tables at night no problem but then you know if you we can dress funny and the local hotel folks won't look as much at us <laughs> well yeah definitely but it's it's a great space because it's got separate rooms so we'll have a lot more sound control for the rpgs that we're running um more space for things like um minis and tabletop board games and things like that I, th I think it's going to be a really fantastic venue for us. Um, and uh, people wanting to get a little more information, check it out. Where will they be going? ChupacabraCon.com. Right here. Right here. ChupacabraCon.com. Uh, how, how much is it uh, for folks to get in and, and play? Um, it's really reasonable. We are doing, I believe that it's 50 for the whole weekend if you register early. And then it goes up to 60 and then 65 at the door. Um, don't quote me on that because <laughs> I think we may have changed the prices this year. But it's a double it's check the website. Double check, double check the website. 60 bucks, and we should be um, accepting registrations sometime in December, January at the latest. 
Okay, so by the time you're seeing this, that means it's already going and accepting registration right now. This is your chance to get in on it if you're all around Central Texas. Um, this is uh, this is a time to get together and, and game with all of your friends. Um, any any extra things that I have forgotten that people need to know? Um, ChupacabraCon does support a charity, uh, Austin Creative Pathways, which is founded in order to help students define their way into creative careers, specifically in the gaming industry. Um, but we do support scholarships that help students to get into workshops for writing, for programming, for um, engineering, any of the um, STEAM things, science, technology, engineering, and math programs. And um, so a portion of the proceeds will be going to support the charity. Most excellent. So you get to come out, you get to hang out with all sorts of uh, big name folks in the gaming industry, play a variety of games, whatever game interests you, especially the LARP room and uh, support a great charity. Uh, Sheena, I want to thank you for coming on the show and um, I will see you at the con. Time again for another terrible LARP. This has been another terrible LARP. Hi, Adventures in LARPing. Chris Glover here in Crafting Corner. And this season, we're going to be doing all sorts of large-scale crafting. Things for, like, props when you want to go on location and it's not quite looking up to par, or you could only get a particular rec room for your LARP and you really need to dress it up. So the things that we're going to be focusing on are props that are big, impressive, to kind of uh, focus your, your attention on so you don't have to look at the rest of the, the area as much or, or centralized focus points for your game, but also props that can be stand up to LARP abuse um, and at the same time it can be transported to some places because we all know when you go from, from your house where you're playing your LARP out to wherever it is that you're playing, space is at a premium. <clears throat> so we're going to walk through the steps of a couple of different construction pieces. The first one we're going to do today is an arch. The, yay, an arch, yeah, big deal. Well, here's what we're going, here's the reason we're going to do this. Um, the, to begin with is to show you some different ways of assembling pieces so that we can transport them. But also with the arch that we're producing, you can either put it around a doorway, we're going to make it sized for a doorway, or freestanding. You need an arch in the middle of the woods, some sort of ruins, this is how to do it. You need something to dress up the front door on your castle that's really a rec room, this is a way to do it. Um, the style, that we're, the way that we're going to build it so that it is takedown is going to be what I refer to as cargo capable, which means you'll be able to transport it into a larger vehicle like a van or a pickup or something like that. Um, but it does still break down so that you can store it at home and things like that. To begin with, I went out to the hardware store, got a bunch of wood. Important tip, when you go to the hardware store and you say, yeah, I'm thinking about building an arch. And the people there are thinking something totally different than what you're actually doing. But that said, uh, I picked up some lumber as I'm trying to do this on the cheap to show you that it can be affordable. And I'm going to get to work measuring out a few pieces cutting a few things, and then I'll show you exactly what I'm doing, and we'll go from there. So watch as we do some more adventures in LARP constructing. Now, to begin with, we're going to need some size up the column itself, or the we're going to have two columns for our arch, side by side, with a cross piece over the doorway to make the entire arch. Now, in order to do that, we're going to make each column separately. So we're going to start on column number one and we're going to have a base that I'm going to show you in a few minutes here. But we're going to start by cutting these strips to go around the edges and be the uprights of our column. Now our column is going to end up being around the eight foot tall mark total. So I need to cut these to make it so that we can fit it in our van. We're going to make two three and a half foot sections topped by a one foot piece that goes across the whole arch. I'm going to begin by marking out these simple 
one by three farrier strips. It's cheap, easy wood, and that's okay for what we're doing. Now with my first round of marks all made, it's time to get to cutting. Now that we have enough strips cut out for our arch, these are all three and a half foot to make a lower section and an upper section, and then I've got leftover one foot strips because this is all cut out of eight foot long pieces and this will be the very top that will stretch across now the next thing we need is the base that we're going to add all these strips to to build up our arch and for that i've got a couple of small sheets of plywood now i could use a real big piece of plywood and cut it all down and uh, probably be a little bit cheaper but let's face it this was easier to get in the car and it's plywood it's only a couple of bucks well, this is a two by two sheet, which also helps us out as far as our cut, because our arch columns are going to be 12 inches by 12 inches. So look, part of the cuts are already done for us. Yay. All I have to do is measure this out because two by two in the hardware world is not exactly two by two. And then this one is just a... 16th of an inch under so when I cut it at the 12 inch mark I'm going to cut it at Remembering that it's just a 16th of an inch Under then I'll make my mark on the other side The level it's a nice flat surface to make quick, quick work of this. Now, once this is cut that way, I also want to go the other direction. And because this is a square, I want the same measurement. Just under a sixteenth here. Just under one and sixteenths there line up my marks All right. now I'm actually going to mark out a second one of these before I cut them because we'll need a few extra pieces uh, a little bit for weight and a little bit for more of what we're doing so I'll get to work on that and uh, we'll be right back in a minute all right, Adventures of Art fans, we're finished cutting all of our base pieces to 12 by 12 inch squares, or close enough. Um, we've got a total of eight of them because we used two of the two by two sheets uh, to go along with our stack of uprights and our extra pieces for the top part of our um, top part of our column for our arch. We're going to pause here, but come back to us next time to see more on this project and more projects beyond that. This is crazy cool, and I hope to see you again, so come on back later. Time again for another terrible LARP. Lane 2 opens up. Go left! Lane 2 closed, lane 2 closed.